Good afternoon, fellow compatriots, dear friends. I am starting a series of talks on Biafra, and this particular one will be captioned Biafra 101. The series of lecture will, will continue as you continue to ask questions about Biafra, will be able to provide answers. In your, in your comments on this uh, uh, video, you should ask questions that are bothering you about Biafra. If you are a Biafran from the Republic of Biafra, declared on the 30th of May 1967. Uh, what is the historical antecedent of Biafra? Biafra. Uh, uh, the Republic of Biafra is gotten from the word bit of, is gotten from the area bit of Biafra. Uh, the bit of Biafra is an area that covers from the estuary of River Nam down to the Gabon. Now, how does this name come about? Biafra is a Calabari name. It, is, it, was, it, is, it was given to that portion of the estuary of Santa Barbara and St. Bartholomew, where we have the present Calabari uh, on the other side, on the western band of, of uh, Santa Barbara, you have Adumama, you have Obioku. If you go a little bit, you have uh, uh, Odioma. Now, because of the, the trouble, the tempest, uh, the roughness of the sea, the waves, the arch waves, and the wind, uh, the area was called Beaflo. Uh, it's descriptive. Beaflo means not properly cooked, raw undone. When the Portuguese came and as they inquire, as they ask for Calabari people, they tell them Calabari, they call them Calabongo, they, they met people in Brass, they told them Barassi and they said Brass. So they, 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 when they met our fathers in that part of Calabari, our fathers told them that this place, this area is called Biaflo. And uh, at that time, since they could not pronounce it very well, uh, they mispronounced it Biafra. And for some time, the Calabar area, the new Calabar area, was referred to as the country of Biafra. I have very, very uh, important documents from. 16 something, which clearly states this, declaring the new Calabar area, Calabar area as the country of Biafra. Later on, when New Calabar became uh, an household name in Europe, there was no need to confuse New Calabar, uh, Calabar, Calabongo, Rio de Ri, etc., etc., Biafra. A, a, a nation arose, a, a state arose in, in the Cameroons, and the Portuguese named this state Biafra as they borrowed Calabar, Calabare, and called the Ethic State, Ethic State, uh, Old Calabar, the same way they borrowed Biafra from the Calabar people and named a state in uh, an emerging state at that time in, in, the, in the Cameroons. And that's not all. They took this name Biafra and went to Portugal and named a, a village, a, an area in Portugal, a community Biafra. Now, why are we Biafrans? We are Biafrans because for the first time, Nigeria was created in 1914. We were never consulted. There's a man called Lolugad. 
his wife Lady Shaw in 1914 because the North was poor, the North could not manage itself, the North was a burden, parasitic as they had always been till today. And then for to take money, the colonial office was afraid of spending money on the useless disease parasitic not. So he decided to 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 fuse, they call it amalgamation, to bring together the north and the south. And that was how we became one. And then uh, the wife of uh, uh, Lord Lugard called this place the area of the Niger, Nigeria. And that's how Nigeria came about. We are never consulted. But, but the case of Biafra was different. The military governor of the Eastern region, Colonel Otomoku Ojuku, convocated an Eastern People's a consultative assembly and the kings, uh, the political elites, the intelligentsias, the, 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 the student union, the traders, and all the labor, everybody was giving uh, delegates. The, the, the delegates law to be deli to, to be represented at the Eastern Regional Consultative Assembly, where amongst all other names, and a German, because the name is a job, and a German, Frank Obigo, uh, one of the finest the German, the founder of a, a graduate of Okrika Grammar School, an alumni of Okrika Grammar School, an old boy of Okrika Grammar School, and the founder of the Niger College, where you have the Polytechnic now. It was an abundant property. So when people talk about abundant property, they were saying it was only both property that were taken. A job people who supported Biafra, their, their properties were also confiscated. That place where the uh, uh, former SBS, School of Basic Studies was later changed to School of Arts, and now Polytechnic Polytechnic was Niger College owned by uh, Franco Vigo. They are my number of Okrika. The technical school on Abaro, the GTC, Abaro, Government Technical College, Abaro, was owned by SPU Organ, who was also an ardent supporter of Biafra, who also had to go on to Elsa. But let us not digress. And that was how how the name Biafra was used to name the new country Biafra. Now, because of the Iziobu's uh, Banjo and Soku, which was not exclusively an Igbo coup, because there were Yorubans in the coup, which led to the killing of corrupt, mostly corrupt politicians in the north, because most of them were in Kaduna, uh, most, most, most of the principal actors were in Kaduna, and they killed mostly corrupt politicians in the north and in the west, the premier of the western region, Akintola was killed and uh, Amadubelo was also killed, who had uh, before then gone to prison for corruption. So all these lies are talking about corruption and uh, not being corrupt. He didn't have money, it's a lie. He was sent by the Kano Emirate Council to prison when he was at Buzo, when he was at Buzo, as uh, district head of Buzo, he was sent to prison. For corruption. Go and check your facts. We have them in our hand. We have them. That's why we read history, you know. So, that was it. So, after the coup, an Iran took power and mismanaged the power, uh, a pogrom started in the north. And several, there have been several pogroms in the north. That was not the beginning. But that pogrom, several Easterners were killed. And the Easterners returned. And Ojuku felt so pained and asked the Easterners what they wanted. And they said they want a country of their own. All the Easterners unanimously decided. My, my grand uncle, the younger brother of my grandmother, King Frederick, Prince William Macri VIII, was one of the people in the forefront of the agitation that the people of the East must leave. Uh, funny enough, <laughs> uh, 
His Majesty Agata is speak more Yoruba than even Kalawari. But His Majesty, so for people to say it was uh, this thing, people genuinely believed in Biafra and they supported Biafra. But several of my uncles supported Biafra. And then the support for Biafra, in the cause of it, African leaders showed concern that Nigeria, according to them, was sliding into uh, chaos. And they decided to start various peace processes. There were peace processes that came up in Addis Ababa, the headquarters of the headquarters of the of the of the OAU. There were peace processes started at uh, at uh, at Kampala in Uganda. What we must exhaustive uh, uh, and the, uh, the most exhaustive of this peace process the most intense of this process, this process started in a, a, a town called Aburi in Ghana, where several meetings were held, several peace meetings were held, and at the end of the day, the East insisted that they want to live peacefully, they did not want, they don't want any war, they did not want anything. And um, it was agreed, uh, Gowana agreed that uh, and the Northern delegation agreed that everybody can go their way. So that was the decision that was taken. But sooner had Gowan returned home, that, uh, from what we, 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 we were told later, that the British advisor are, ah, if these people go, you people are going to suffer. And, um, and immediately Gowan changed and started the process of uh, uh, instigating war against uh, uh, the eastern region that has decided to declare Biafra. Biafra was actually declared on the 30th day of May 1967. So he instigated war. Gowan made a broker that is going to cross uh, Biafra. And so many Yorubas at that time, uh, uh, Justice Kayode Oshaw, of the Western Appeal Court, the VC of UI there, Inca, and several others came out against the cross that Nigeria is a union of the willing and nobody can force anybody to belong. And that was how the program was visited on us, supported by Britain, supported by the Soviet Union when they came together, even though there was a cold war. pilots were flying their planes, bombing innocent people like they did in Abonima, with some liars erroneously saying that Abonima, uh, it was Biafra that had bombed Abonima. It was a Nigerian government sent by Goa and an Egyptian, Egyptian military plane, an Egyptian pilot uh, that bombed Abonima on two occasions that led to the death of so many people. Now, Biafra, having given you the, the the background to which Biafra came. Biafra was a fight for justice, a fight to be free, a fight from being killed by uh, savages uh, in the Gambari North, a fight as we are fighting today. So as we are friends today, a lot of people have asked me the question, Alaji Dokwasari, Alaji why are you supporting Biafra? I'm not supporting Biafra, I am Biafra. I'm a Biafra. Biafra, first and foremost, is Kalawari. Kalawaris are more Biafrans than any other people. That extent to Jaws. The Jaws are more Biafrans than any other people. Biafra is gotten from us. We are Biafran first before all other people. So nobody is including us. Others are borrowing from us. Others are supporting us to achieve our independence. Now, uh, a lot of allegations have been made that uh, if Biafra comes, the Igbos are going to oppress us, that before they oppress our people, they killed our people. And I ask questions. If we are fighting a war today, and some of our people then go and support other people, what will happen? We will leave them to come and kill us, bring the enemy to come and kill us. Let me just give you an example, just now. There is crisis between Obey uh, and the job clans, and uh, 
Alaja in a do local government area, an Orobo, uh, an Orobo town. And on mere suspicion, the military and that has always taken side against the job people in all in, in all conflict with any other people. The military had always taken side with other people against the job people. The military, uh, the navy, the Nigerian navy came into uh, Obejo and entered the shrine of the base to, 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 to desecrate the shrine of the base to burn it down. The people of Obejo resisted and some people, uh, somebody died. And, and, and some of them were wearing masks. And because my in-law, uh, Aishi Boroputu, works for government, he from their suspicion that he was the person who was wearing masks, was the person who led the people to come and burn his house had been born, uh, to burn, uh, attempt to burn the child. His house had been born. He had been declared personal non granta in the old of Ebojo. It's an Ebojo Aishi. So if that is happening amongst the joy, the job, so if we are fighting and somebody wants to jeopardize the future of millions of people because of whatever reason, we, and such a person will be allowed, no, it's not going to be possible at all times. It's an enemy within and it's more dangerous than the enemy outside. And some people have said the evils will overrun us, they will do that. That's a big insult. How can you insult me in that way? I am battle tested. I am a young man. And I know what I am. I am Isi one and a key. Tinang Mamma Tibala Fama one and a key. Yam Napi Namene refited them, every document no matter by Yam, no matter of Rabra Pinquet Toki. If you know that, it's the drum name of my father, you can go and ask. My, the matriarch of my house, a woman, went to battle and with her bare hand caught an enemy and brought him for the baby festival. A woman. So why should I be afraid? We are mad, doko, doko, doko. we are small, but we are courageous. He just said, Kuro Yiku to Tombo Chigeya, Kuro Yiku to Tombo He just said, Kuro Yiku to Tombo Chigeya, Kuro Yiku to Tombo Chigeya. Hey, what are you doing? I love you. I I I I I I we are very, very unkind and unfair to ourselves. That means all this ula bula, all this, this thing is just grandstanding. Karma declaration is grandstanding. If we believe that only Igbos can come into our Biafra, can come and become part of our Biafra and take Biafra from us, and suppress us, and overrun us, and kill us. So why did we go and start Karma declaration and all this thing, deceiving people? That is genocidal deception because we have led a lot of people to their death for nothing. I believe that as you continue, you ask your question. I believe that as you go, we'll clear all doubts, we'll clear most of these lies. The truth is very clear that we're more, Biafra will be a land of freedom, a land of equality, a land of justice, and a land of fair play. Thank you.